Good day. My name is Lloyd Chabe, and today we'll be presenting heat transfer. So, grade sevens, let's begin. For your pre-knowledge, you have already discussed potential energy, kinetic energy, potential and kinetic energy in systems, the law of conservation of energy. Out of all these topics, I would like you to remember when you were dealing with potential and kinetic energy systems to go and check your notes on thermal systems. This is a continuation of that information. So grade sevens, what is it expected from us by the end of this lesson? By the end of this lesson, you are expected to be able to define heat transfer, list the three different methods of heat transfer, define conduction, and lastly, define conductors and insulators. Now, I want you to look at the definitions of this scientific vocabulary because we are going to be using most of these words when we are dealing with heat transfer. Heating is the process in which energy is transferred from a hotter body to a cooler body. So one will ask, what is a hotter body? It's having a higher temperature. And then a cooler one, it's having a lower temperature. Then temperature is a measure of how hot or cold something is. Conduction, on the other hand, is the transfer of energy between solid objects that are in direct physical contact with each other. Conductors are materials that transfer energy easily. Insulators, materials that are poor conductors of heat. Now let's move to our introduction on heat transfer. Like I've already mentioned, in the last chapters we have looked at thermal systems. And we said in that system, the thermal energy of an object is the amount of energy it has inside of it. In other words, its internal energy. In a thermal system, thermal energy is transferred from one object to another. Now, let's define heat. Heat is the transfer of the thermal energy we mentioned above from a system to its surroundings or from one object to another. This transfer of energy is from the object at a higher temperature to the object at a lower temperature. Now let's look at this picture. We have our burning candle, a metal rod. So when you hold a metal rod, put it on the flame on your candle, your, can your metal rod is going to warm up, but now that heat won't be stationary. It will be moving from the hotter part of the, motor, the metal rod to the cooler part. And in no time, you will feel the heat in your hand. So with this picture in mind, let's continue. It is very important, learners, to know that in science, heat and temperature are not the same thing. Heat is the transfer of thermal energy from a system to its surroundings or from one object to another as a result of a difference in temperature. Heat is measured in joules. This is because heat is a transfer of energy. Temperature, on the other hand, is a measure of how hot or cold a substance feels, and it is measured in degrees Celsius. Temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles in an object or in a system. We use an instrument called thermometer to measure the temperature of an object or substance. 
Now, I, with this information on the slide, I want you to do the following activity using this table. Complete the following table to summarize the differences between heat and temperature as discussed above. You can pause this video right now and just copy these tables on your workbook and try to answer. It is important for us learners to know the difference between heat and temperature. Here is the completed table. Your answers were supposed to be, when you defining heat, we already said, heat is the transfer of energy from a hotter object to a colder object, or from a system to its surroundings. And the definition for temperature Temperature is a measure of how hot or cold a substance feels. A measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles of a substance. So the unit of measurement for heat is joules. And temperature have a different unit of measurement, which is degrees Celsius. And there are the symbols. I hope you got them all right. Now, let's continue with our topic, which is heat transfer. Now, we need to define it after we have seen the difference between heat and temperature. Now, we are saying heat transfer is the movement of heat energy from one substance to another. Another point that we need to stress is heat energy always moves from a warmer substance to a cooler substance. So in an activity, when we've given you two blocks, the one red, the one blue, your arrow will be pointed from hot to cold. Another point that we need to stress is the fact that the greater the difference in temperature between the substance the faster the heat will transfer. Now, here is another activity that I want us to do to increase our understanding on this topic on heat transfer. Please look at these pictures and identify the hotter and cooler object in each picture and complete the table in the following slide. A beautiful lady ironing the clothes, a kettle on your gas stove, and chicken on the fire. So using the following table to put your answers. Again, take your time, pause the video, and remember what was said earlier and answer activity two. Our question again, identify the hotter and cooler object in the picture and complete the table. Just for recap, let's look at the pictures again. A lady ironing a cloth, clothing, a kettle on a gas stove, and your chicken on a fire. Now let's go back to our table. Take your time, take your time, and answer this activity. Pause the video, because when I continue, we will be discussing our answers. Okay. Here is the completed table. So the description of our picture, ironing clothing, boiling water in a kettle over the flame of a gas stove, cooking chicken on a fire. So here are the expected answers. For ironing clothing, 
The hotter object is the iron, and the cooler object is our clothes. When boiling water in a kettle over the flame of a gas stove, our hotter object is the kettle through its element, and then the cooler object is our water. Cooking chicken on a fire, the hotter object is the fire, and cooler object is the chicken. Now, let's explain the heat transfer that is taking place. The movement of heat from one object to the other. Because we need to explain it in the correct direction. So for iron, ironing clothing, heat energy is transferred from the iron to the clothing. For boiling water in a kettle over the flame of a gas stove, heat energy is transferred from the kettle to the water. But note that heat is also transferred from the flame to the kettle. Cooking chicken on a fire, heat is transferred from the fire to the chicken. I hope you got most of your answers, if not all of them, correct. Now let's move on. With the information we have gathered so far, we can now recap that we said heat is the transfer of energy. During energy transfer, the energy moves from the hotter object to the colder object. And this means that the hotter object will cool down and the colder object will warm up. The energy transfer will continue the movement of energy from one object to another will continue until both objects are at the same temperature. Grade sevens, let's answer these two simple questions. What happens to ice when it is taken out of the freezer on a hot summer day? What happens? to ice when it is taken out of the freezer on a hot summer day. Number two, why does ice melt when it is taken out of the freezer? Why does ice melt when it is taken out of the freezer? Now, what happens to ice when it is taken out of the freezer on a hot day? The ice will melt. And why does ice melt when it is taken out of the freezer? The ice melts because the heat energy from the surroundings, the object in, in which it is resting on, or the surrounding air is transferred to the ice. Hence, the ice will melt. Now, heat transfer as we continue. According to our objectives, we said, one thing that at the end of the lesson you should have gained is you are supposed to understand that heat transfer, it happens in three ways. There are three ways in which Thermal energy can be transferred from one object and a system or a substance ne, to another from a system to its surroundings. Remember now, we said heat transfer is the movement of heat from one object to another. So here are those three ways. The first one is conduction. The second one, convection. The third one, Radiation. Let's look at them again. Conduction, convection, radiation. We are going to discuss conduction for this part of the video. And for the second part of the video, we will be continuing with convection and radiation. So let's start discussing conduction. Conduction. Look at the picture here. We still have our pot placed on a gas stove. So have you noticed that when you put a cold 
metal teaspoon into your hot cup of tea, the teaspoon hen handle also warms up after a while. Have you noticed that? Have you ever wondered how this warmth is moved from the hot tea to the cold teaspoon and warm it up? This is one way in which energy is transferred, and this is called conduction. We are saying the heat is the warmth of our hot cup of tea is transferred from the tea to the spoon, to the cold teaspoon, and that teaspoon will warm up. So we call that transfer conduction. Now let's define conduction. Conduction is the transfer of heat energy between solid objects that are touching. So what do we mean by say solid objects that are touching? We are saying they are supposed to be in direct physical contact with each other. So the transfer of energy between solid objects in direct physical contact is the one that we call conduction. So our example is still our cooking pot on a hot stove. The pot is touching the stove. Hence we say the transfer of heat from the stove to the pot is named conduction. Now, when we look at this picture again, remember we had this blue and red picture that were separated in the previous slides. We had cold under the color blue and we had the word hot under the color red. Now, look at this picture. They are touching each other. They are in direct contact. So this form of heat transfer, when the objects are in direct contact with each other, it is called conduction. Heat transfer by conduction is the transfer of heat through direct contact. Okay, let's look at this example that I would like you to carry out in your classrooms. You are going to need two styrofoams and a metal. So you're going to put warm water on the other cup and cold water on the other cup. So the expected result of this will be the metal will conduct the heat from the cup of warm water to the cup of cool water. Another example is our Coke that is filled with ice. And now when we explain conduction on this picture we are saying your coke becomes cold because the heat from the coke or the soda is transferred into the ice and not the other way now with the information gathered right now grade sevens let's do activity number four remember these pictures we have done them already but now we're going to ask different questions pertaining to them. A lady ironing clothes, your kettle on a boiling water on a kettle, inside a kettle on your gas stove, chicken on the fire. Now you are familiar with this pictures, but now we have a different question set for you guys now. Identify which pictures shows heat Transfer by conduction. By conduction, which we have explained it as the transfer of heat that happens between objects that are touching each other. That is the main part of the explanation that you shouldn't forget. That are touching or in physical contact with each other. So grade sevens. Here is your table again. Pause the video and do this activity. And then we will follow up with your answers. Now, here is the completed table. 
we have asked you to explain how heat conduction occurs or why does, does it not occur in terms of each picture that was given. So we are saying when we are ironing clothes, yes, conduction is taking place. Why are we saying that? The iron is hot, the clothing is cool. The hot iron is touching the cool clothing. Heat is transferred from the hot iron to the cool clothing by conduction. As a result, the clothing will become hotter. For boiling water in a kettle over the flame of a gas, we say yes, there is a conduction. Heat is transferred by conduction. The water in the kettle, the water is touching the kettle, the kettle becomes hot from flames. The kettle transfers heat to the water by conduction. The water will become hotter and start to boil. Now, cooking chicken on a fire, we say there is no conduction. This is not heat transfer by conduction. Why? Now we say the chicken is not touching the fire. I hope you got all your answers correct. Now to the part that I love the most, grade sevens, we need to do this experiment. This experiment will help us explain conduction through a metal rod. Now, your teacher will set up the demonstration as in the diagram below. Your work is to observe what happens to the paper clips as the Benson burner is lit and heat is applied to one end of the metal rod. So this is the setup. It's a preferred setup, by the way. So if you don't have all these materials, you should just improvise. But our main apparatus is the Benson burner, your metal rod covered in Vaseline, and your paper clips. Those three are your main apparatus. So don't worry about this picture. Just improvise if some of these apparatus you don't have. Let me repeat. Your main, all you need is your Benson banner, your metal rod covered in Vaseline, and your paper clips. So I have already done this experiment. I have a short video for you guys. So let's watch it right now. Right. Now, as we have seen on our experiment, let's go back to the slide of our picture here. I can't wait for you guys to pause this video and do that experiment.
It is a perfect example of how conduction is taking place through a metal rod. So I hope you are going to improvise like I've said. Do not worry about the setup on the picture as long as you have the Benson banner, the metal rod covered in Vaseline and paper clip. And you will enjoy because science is a subject that needs to be done practically. Now we need to discuss the last two points that we have set as our objectives. We said we, will, we need to talk about the conductors and insulators. We need to differentiate between the two. So let's start discussing conductors. Sometimes we need to transfer heat from one object to another. An example is from a stove top to a cooking pot. Now, conductors, they are materials that allow heat energy to be transferred. A cooking pot should be made out of a conductor. Why are we saying that? So that the heat energy from the stove can be transferred to the cooking pot. Metals are good conductors of heat, but some metals conduct heat better than others. Now, here is another investigation that I would like you guys to do. Which metals are the best conductors of heat? So your teacher will help you collect the following materials and apparatus. Benson burner, we are going to need it again. Vaseline, copper, iron brass and aluminum rod. You're going to need stopwatch. You're going to need drawing pins, a tripod, cardboard or paper, and the lastly, matches. So this is the picture that at the end you are expected to put them in this order for the best results. So again, you are scientists already, grade sevens. You can improvise. If there is no tripod, come up with something different. The main thing, main apparatus I will mention again here, is your Benson banner and your different rods and your drawing pin and Vaseline. So what you put it onto, just improvise. Let nothing stop you from carrying out practicals or investigation in natural sciences. So grade seven, let's just discuss the method that your, you and your teacher will be following. Right, the first one, you, you are going to stick the flat end of a drawing pin to the end of each of the metal rods using the Vaseline. You are going to place the cardboard on the tripod and balance the metal rods on the cardboard so that one end of each is over the Benson banner. Light the Benson banner and you are going to use your stopwatch now to measure how long it takes for each of the pin to drop off. Record your results in the table. Draw a bar graph to illustrate your result. So I hope you are going to enjoy that investigation. Now let's discuss the last one that we are saying they are called insulators. Learners, you have dealt with this in grade 5 and grade 6, but now on a deeper level in grade 7, you need to carry out investigation that will make you understand them even better. So now let's discuss insulators. Sometimes we do not want heat energy to be transferred. For example, on a cold day, we wear thick jackets. It's winter now, grade 7s. Some of you are wearing jerseys. Why are we wearing thick jackets in winter? We are saying the jacket will prevent the heat from being transferred from our warm bodies to the cooler air. This helps keep us warm. Right, now here are the examples of insulators. Poor conductors of heat are called insulators of heat. We're talking about a styrofoam, which you can pour hot, cup hot coffee in it and your hands will never burn. Why? Because your styrofoam is a poor conductor of heat. The wooden spoon, you can stir your nice delicious stew and not burn. Why? Because a wooden spoon is a poor conductor of heat. 
Lastly, our plastic cup, the same applies. No matter how hot the content is, heat won't be transferred directly to your hand. So we're saying plastic, wood, styrofoam, they are poor conductors of heat. One last example we are saying, learners, you already know these examples. This pot is one example of insulation that is taking place here. A cooking pot handle should be made out of an insulating material. Do you know the reason why? I hope you are now telling your teacher why do we need an insulating material for our pot handles. Like I said, learners, this lesson, heat transfer, we are only going to end now for conduction. And then when we come back, we are going to discuss convection and radiation. Thank you very much for listening. Until we meet again. Thank you. Welcome back, grade sevens. Let's continue our lesson on heat transfer. This part of the video will be much shorter than the first one. And I hope you are enjoying already the first part through the experiments that I said, take time to carry them out and then do not stress with the apparatus. You can improvise. You are a scientist and a scientist can make plans so that they can easily investigate. So grade sevens, let's begin. Let's recap on the objectives we have already discussed. We have defined heat transfer. We have listed the three different methods of heat transfer. We said it's conduction. We said it's convection and radiation. We have already discussed conductions. And like I said, I hope you enjoyed the experiments for conductions. So now we are going to move on to convection and radiation. We have already defined conduction, like I've said, and we define conductors and insulators. Now let's discuss the objectives that are expected from us at the end of this lesson. Now we're expected to define convection, convection currents, define radiation. So here are the scientific vocabulary that we are going to meet or come across as we go along. Grade seven, you may ask, what is the, word, the meaning of the word expand? It means to increase in size and volume. Convection current means the upward movement of heated particles and the downward movement of cooled particles in a liquid or a gas during heat transfer. I like this one. Let's read it again. The upward movement of heat particles, heated particles, we should make mention of that. The upward movement of heated particles, they are the ones that are going up, and the downward movement of cooled particles in a liquid or a gas during heat transfer. Number three, radiant heat. We are saying heat, energy that is transferred through radiation. We call it radiant heat. Electromagnetic waves are special waves that can transfer heat energy. And then lastly, on our vocab, vacuum is an empty space that has no particles. Grade seven, let's conclude. Let's continue. We have concluded the vocab. Now we are moving on to convection. Think of a pot of water on a stove. Only the bottom of the pot touches the stove plate, but all of the water inside the pot, even the water not touching the sides, becomes warmer. How does the energy transfer throughout the water in the pot? The transfer of energy is because of convection. Let's 
Let's look at the picture below. Here is your Benson banner, your tripod and your beaker with water in it. So this is what I want you to have in mind when we are talking about convection. Remember we said only the bottom of the pot touches the stove, or in this case now, only the bottom of this beaker is touching the tripod. But all of the water inside this beaker now, in this case, even the water not touching the sides, becomes warmer. So with this picture in mind, now let's continue. Let's now explain what we observed in the last activity. Convection is the transfer of thermal energy from one place to another by the movement of gas or liquid particles. As a gas or liquid is heated, the substance expands. Remember we said on our definition that expand means to increase in size and volume. This is because the particles in liquid and gases, they gain kinetic energy when they are heated and start to move faster. I hope you still remember the content taught on kinetic energy. So let me read this again. This is because the particles in liquid and gases, those small particles, they gain what we have already learned about, which is what? Kinetic energy when they are heated and they start to move. This causes the heated liquid or gas to move upwards and the colder liquid or gas moves downwards. Hence, I said, remember this picture again. We are saying when this is, this causes the red part of the arrows, look at them now. We are saying the heated liquid or the gas in another case will move upwards and the cold, colder liquid, the blue part, of the liquid will move down. So keep this picture. Every time I explain, please have this picture in mind. Right. So now let's conclude this slide by saying, when the warm liquid or gas reaches the top, it cools down again and therefore moves back down again. So it will keep on moving like that until all of the water is warm enough and the water will start boiling. Now look at this picture. Warm fluids, they rise, they cool down, they sink, and then they are warmed again. I hope you got that rhythm. The warm fluid rise, the red part of our arrows, because we are saying, the container is touching the source of heat. Now, the bottom part will receive or will receive the heat that is conducted through conduction that we have mentioned above. But now, inside the water, the liquid itself, the warm fluid will rise up there next to the face. It will cool down. And then it will sink, meaning a downward movement. And then are warmed up again. This circle called the movement in conduction, convection will happen again and again and again and again until all of the water is warmed up and the water will start to boil. So with this in mind now, the grade sevens, I have a clip that I want you guys to watch. And please listen attentively. Transfer of heat by convection. In this module, you will learn about the transfer of heat by convection. Water is boiled by heating it under the container. It cannot be done by heating it from the side 
or from the top. This is because of the peculiar way heat is transferred in liquid. Let us perform an activity to demonstrate the transfer of heat in liquids and gases. The items required for this activity are a round bottom flask, tripod stand, candle, matchbox, straw, potassium permanganate crystals, and water. Fill approximately two-thirds of the flask with water and place it on the tripod stand. Wait till the water in the flask is still. Now, with the help of a straw, gently place a crystal of potassium permanganate at the bottom of the flask. Now, heat the water by placing the lighted candle just below the crystal. Carefully look at the pattern in which the pink color spreads. Directly above the flame, it goes up, but it sinks at the side. Why does this happen? When water is heated, the water near the flame gets hot and rises up. The cold water from the sides moves down towards the source of heat. This cold water then gets hot and rises up. This process continues until the whole water attains the same temperature. This kind of heat transfer is known as convection. In convection, there is an actual transfer of the particles of the medium. This process necessitates the heating of a liquid from below rather than from the side or the top in order for it to boil. So, convection is the mode of heat transfer in liquid. Heat transfer in liquids takes place by the process of convection. But what about the heat transfer in gases? Let us see. Observe the smoke coming out of a burning incense stick. The effect may not be as clear as in the case of water. This is because even a slight movement in air can disturb the smoke. If there is no movement in air, then the smoke does not spread immediately around. First, it rises up and then spreads. This is because the air near the burning tip gets hot and rises up. Cold air from the sides moves downwards and the process repeats. Here again, there is an actual transfer of the particles of the medium. That is, in the case of gases too, convection is the mode of transfer of heat. You can test this by holding your palm at a safe height above a candle flame. The palm feels hot only when it is held directly above the flame. If the palm is held on the sides of the flame, it does not feel so hot. This is because of the fact that hot air always rises up as it becomes lighter. So, it can be inferred that convection is the mode of heat transfer in both liquids and gases. In this module you have learnt, convection is the mode of transfer of heat in liquids and gases. In convection, there is an actual transfer of the particles of the medium. Right, great servants. I hope you have enjoyed the video, and the video is so clear. Repeating what we have already said, we are saying convection warm fluid rises and they cool down and sink and then are warmed again. So your teacher will use all the apparatus that are set on that video to create a more room for understanding. So, grade sevens, you know all I, I like is you supposed to do experiment as much as you can. But please be aware, you should take measures of COVID into cooking sense. But don't forget, natural science, we enjoy it by doing practical activities. So, let's move on, grade sevens. We are saying now that we, we have learned and talked about the experiment, we need to apply this in the world around us. Remember, we should learn as the scientists to take this information and apply it on our surroundings. 
So here are the examples. Now, we are saying it is interesting to learn about concepts and theories in science, but it is even more interesting when we discover how this has an influence in our daily lives. Imagine that your teacher has, given, has been given a heater and an air conditioning unit for your classroom. The heater will warm your classroom in winter and the air conditioner will keep you cool in summer. Now, here is your part. You need to help your teacher decide whether each item should go in the classroom. I say the part of your job. You need to help your teacher to decide where each item should go in the classroom. Should they go on the wall near the ceiling or near the floor? Should they go next to a window? Please look at the following picture. With the information that we have already discussed, it will make you make a better decision. I hope you remember what was already said. We said, heated liquid or gas, the particles normally moves up, and the colder liquid or gas, the particles move down. So look at this picture. The heater is, pay, is placed on the floor. The hot air rises, the air is cooled by the, the one that is cooled by the room will sink. Now, the very same cool air now will be heated by our heater on the floor and the hot air will rise. So convection will keep on happening in this room until all the air in this room has been warmed up. So your answer, or the decision you should make in helping your teacher is to take your heater and place it near the floor. A heater, like I said, should be placed near the floor. As it heats the air around it, the warm air will rise and be replaced by cool air. The cool air is then warmed and rises. This creates a convection current which will warm the entire room. So the diagram sh should show the upward circulation of the warm air. So, according to what we have looked at already, we are saying, repeating what, now we are visualizing it. We are saying the heater should be placed near the floor. As it heats the air around it, the warm air will rise, hence our red arrows, and be replaced by the cool air with blue arrows. The cool air is then warmed and rises. This creates a convection current which will warm the entire room. The diagram explains it better. So grade sevens, let's move right along. Now we need to look at this picture. talking about the installation of an air conditioner. Remember, your teacher had a heater and an air conditioner. So, we are saying the warmer air near the floor of the room will then rise up and is cooled by the cooled air from the air conditioner. The air conditioner should be placed near the ceiling. As it cools down the warm air near the ceiling, the cool air will move down 
towards the floor and it will be replaced by the warm air from below. The warm air is then cooled by the air conditioner. This will also create what we have discussed already, the convection current, which will cool the entire room. I hope you understand. Let's explain again. An air conditioner should be placed near the ceiling as it cools the warm air, the warm air near the ceiling, the cool air will move downwards towards the floor and is replaced by the warm air from below. The warm air is then cooled by the air conditioner and this creates a convection current which will cool the entire room. Now, Great sevens, let's move to the last part of our lesson, which is radiation now. Radiation, the last part of heat transfer. Now, have you ever wondered how the sun is able to warm us even through, even though it is so far away? The energy is transferred from the sun to everything on the earth. The sun does not need to be touching the earth for the energy to be transferred. Also, there is space between the earth and the sun. Now, continuing grade 7 with the radiation, the energy from the sun is able to warm us without the sun ever touching us. This transfer of energy is called radiation. It is different to conduction. It is also different from convection as it does not require objects to be touching each other or it does not require the movement of particles. Let us repeat that. Radiation is different to conduction, which talk about the objects needing to touch each other, and convection, which talk about the movement of particles. So in radiation, in our example of the sun, the energy from the sun is able to warm us without the sun ever touching us. Now let's look at this picture. There is no direct contact between the substances. So in this example, the red block will represent the sun and the blue block will represent the earth. So you see the waves that we are mentioning called the electromagnetic waves. From the sun, they will be transferred to the planet earth. Now, another picture that will make this more clearer we are saying, look at the sun and look at planet Earth. There is a vast space between them, but we still receive heat from the sun. So heat from the sun is being radiated through the empty space to the Earth. Another example, the great sevens, the heat from the campfire transfer into your marshmallows, giving you a yummy, gooey treat. Direct contact between the fire and the marshmallow will ruin it. That is why you're supposed to place your, your marshmallow on a higher level because the flames will burn it. So you don't need what we call what? Conduction. You need the fire to radiate electromagnetic waves in order for the heat to be transferred to your marshmallow, and then you will enjoy them much better. Great servants, I hope you will replay this video time and again to recall all the content that is taught here. Remember, we made mention of the three ways in which heat is transferred, which is conduction, convection, radiation. I wish you a good luck for this year and please keep on working hard.
for you to pass grade seven and become the best scientist South Africa will ever had, have ever had. So grade sevens, until we meet again, ciao, ciao.